The goal is really to change the conversation through which we talk about the public sector, the way we talk about growth, smart, inclusive, sustainable growth, how to get there, and especially to change the way that we, if you want, think about the relationship between finance and the real economy. I'm very indebted to Mariana and indeed some of her associates for the kind of creative thinking that's gone on in this whole ed era and which we want to learn from. Modern capital markets give very little impression of valuing the long term. Instead, they value instant gratification, profits being distributed rather than reinvested. Most modern banking systems and most capital market credit systems, securitized credit uh, in the US, is not doing this funding of new capital investment by uh, businesses, which our textbooks say. We are in a crisis of failure to innovate. Productivity in the West is not respond, it, it does not, you know, it does not respond to the level of tech innovation that has happened. If we were really to be taken seriously as a country, we probably need to be thinking of spending roughly double what we do on innovation and research. We can invest in some of these businesses ourselves, leveraging in private sector money. We think we can get three to one and do essentially what the market isn't doing. In this way, mission-oriented uh, institutions, particularly development banks, are a important actor in these process. In Brazil, in China, where you have remaining state development systems, the performance has been quite different. But it's been different because the financial system is differently organized. We need new policies now. We can't, it's not a matter of just going back and getting the New Deal reforms. We need new policies to deal with the new situation. We have to reform the financial system because, as Minsky said, a capital system is a financial system. Industrial and innovation policies have to do with creating new markets instead of correcting, correcting market failures. That's, this uh, should be almost self-evident. We just need to update the framework we're using around market failures and cost-benefit analysis. We need mission orientation. It can be putting a man on the moon, as narrow as that, or it can be the whole of suburbanization. Directionality matters very much. Um, the way it matters in the way we finance investment or innovation, it very much matters in the way we do fiscal policy, in the way we stabilize the macroeconomy, and in the way we attempt to secure full employment. The main point um, that um, distinguishes us from private banks is that we really try to look into the future. So we're not only looking into the next five years, we look into the next um, 10, 15, 20 years. And we see that um, there are three major challenges. One is environmental and, and climate protection, the next demographic change, and then of course ongoing globalization and innovation. We must develop innovative instruments that are adequate to the problems. For the sake of this conference, I have uh, single-handedly decided to rename our institution from the European Investment Bank to the European Innovation Bank. Innovation, whether it's mission-oriented or otherwise, and in any given sector, is not about winning or losing a, spa a race, but exploring a space. If it works, will it matter? very much up front. So the, so the whether it fails or not question is really not the one that we use to screen. It's if it potentially works, is someone going to care? Recognizing failure as a positive metric is, is good. We need to find the right sort of mechanism of presenting that in a, in a consistent way back to, from a treasury point of view in terms of GVA, jobs, and return to the uh, economy. Technological progress is not a straight line. It goes in very unpredictable ways. So you look at the time scale and you look at where it went, there are lots of failures, there are lots of you know, skeletons out there. And, and those were, again, opportunities to learn. 
the state can do nothing without a very committed private sector. How do we not only reform finance so we get more long-termism, which anyone who thinks about innovation wants, but also definancialize the real economy, industry. I mean, I see biotech as a marathon of 25 miles, and I see venture capitalists coming in at the last 100, year, 100 yards before the finishing line. And the rest of the journey is governments. In most countries, VCs, they are bankers types of people, and you need industrialists. Now that those companies are making lots and lots of money, and as we'll see, giving lots, almost all that money to their shareholders, the question is who's gonna invest in the knowledge base? How can firms sell a growing output to a population whose wages are not growing in real terms? And the only way that they can do this is by lending to them so that they can buy the output. The first big transition was our move from commercial capitalism to industrial capitalism. Now, we are moving to a new form. The jury is still out what it will be. Either a brutal form of capitalism or a more inclusive one. There's a whole list of things that one could do, but the point is not necessarily, oh, that one's right, that one's wrong, but just to at least to have the debate, but by having this completely cartoon image of where value comes from, the risk-taking entrepreneurs, the small garage chinkers, and the kind of boring, lethargic facilitator of the state, that has been one of the lead contributors to all this value extraction. So it's not just about tax policy or even these measures, but really rethinking completely the role of these different actors and telling a much more wholesome story, and that's a huge battle.